In today's video, Conor McGregor and Dan Hooker are set to fight on February 1st in Saudi Arabia. Is this going to be a big deal, or just McGregor hyping things up again? Let's find out. However, some fans are actually worried that McGregor might be taking over Bruce Buffer's iconic role. Are you ready? Hola, España! All right, gang, I'm back with another announcement. Dana White has just announced another big fight and it looks like Shavkat's time to shine has arrived. Is Ramzan Kadyrov the real reason behind Dmitry Bivol's defeat? Many believe that Kadyrov's influence played a role in the outcome, with his power impacting the decision. If you ask how many pretensions on, I have this center of the city, and come Ilya Tapuria and Max Holloway are heading to Abu Dhabi for UFC 308 and have messages for each other. At a big boxing event in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, Artur Beterbiev became the undisputed light heavyweight champion after defeating fellow Russian fighter Dmitry Bivol. But right after the fight, fans started talking about why Bivol might have really lost. It's a bit, yeah. A lot of them pointed to the fact that Ramzan Kadyrov, the controversial Chechen leader, was sitting in the front row and even got into the ring to congratulate Beterbiev on his win. Even his right-hand man, Delim Khanov, almost fought in the ring with the security personnel. Bivol and his team were already celebrating victory. They were so confident in themselves. That's why the MMA community and boxing world on social media quickly claimed that Kadyrov's presence might have influenced the judges. One fan wrote on X, when I saw him, I knew there was no way they would let Artur Beterbiev lose. Another fan pointed out that Kadyrov was in the ring before the official result was even announced. Some fans were convinced Bivol either won the fight or it should have been a draw. Another fan joked that if Kadyrov showed up at UFC 308 and stood in Kamzat Chemaev's corner, Robert Whittaker wouldn't stand a chance. Of course, most of these comments were lighthearted, but they show how much influence people think Kadyrov has. Thank you everybody who was supporting me, who believed in my skills and I want to say sorry that... Video surfaced online showing Dmitry Bivol's ex-wife celebrating his recent defeat. The clip quickly caught the attention of fans who were surprised to see her reaction to the outcome of the fight. Artur! <laughs> Я рада за тебя. Вперед. Теперь мое дело в суде. Впервые мне плевать на хейтеров на миллион процентов. Любой, кто обидит моих детей, будет наказан. Считайте, что я ведьма. Считайте обо мне все, что угодно. Карма настигла человека этого плохого редиску. Короче, я рада. Честно, ура. After a video surfaced where Dmitry Bivol struggled to hit a punching bag, Israel Adesanya stepped in to give him some boxing advice. Adesanya even placed a $10,000 bet on Bivol to win, confident in his abilities. Unfortunately for Adesanya, things didn't go as planned this time. Conor McGregor has named Dan Hooker as his potential opponent for his comeback fight in February. What's your message? What's your message to Floyd? Conor, do we have a date for the comeback yet? February 4th, Saudi Arabia. Who's the opponent? Earlier this week, Hooker mentioned he'd be up for fighting Conor early next year, even though he's already been offered another good opponent. But clearly, Hooker would prefer a shot at McGregor. Chilling after this, I'm all jumping into training camp, so I'm good to go January, March next year. So it's like, man, if he wants to, if he wants to fight, like, oh, the UFC have already put good opponent in front of me. But obviously, if 
we can get that fight put together, we can get that fight put together. I, I feel like it's another big fight that the fans would like to see, you know? The opponent that you've had put in front of you, would that be... Uh, no, I'm not asking who it would be. It's not just Dan Hooker who's eager to fight McGregor. We ain't here working. Getting back on the mat. Getting back on the mat. Getting back on the mat. Hey, Connor, getting back on the mat. Stay tuned, baby. Stay tuned. The buzz around who Connor will face in his comeback is heating up, and fans are waiting to see who gets the shot. After a recent video surfaced, some fans are actually worried that Conor McGregor might be taking over Bruce Buffer's iconic role. Are you ready? España! Oh. <laughs> this is BKFC! Let's get ready to rumble! Hola, España! Of course, this is a joke. On top of that, McGregor threw some shade at Ilya Tapuria. So I won two big bets betting on Spanish athletes. So there you go, let's go Spain. I would say I would bet on Ilya Tapuria, but he is not Spanish, he is Georgian. Let's be real. I am a Spanish, if not more Spanish than Ilya Tapuria. He is a Georgian man undercover. He is operating undercover. He even had a message for Max Holloway on X, saying, Max Holloway, you're fucked. Holloway responded to Tapuria's message by posing with his BMF belt and writing, earned, not bought. This shows Holloway is ready for the challenge, and it looks like we're in for an exciting fight soon. Who are you rooting for, Max Holloway or Ilya Tapuria? Drop your predictions in the comments and let us know who you're backing. Dana White just announced another big fight. Saturday, December 7th, from the T-Mobile Arena here in Las Vegas, in the main event, welterweight champion Bilal Muhammad takes on the undefeated Shavkat Rachmanov. Fans are wondering if Dana White has something against Muhammad because he's facing such a dangerous opponent so soon, and it looks like Shavkat's time to shine has arrived. Dana White couldn't ignore the impressive win of Alex Pereira's sister, Aline Pereira, who knocked out American fighter Dee Begley at the Karate Combat 50 event in Salt Lake City. Aline pulled off the victory using her brother's signature combination, like brother, like sister. Dana White posted on social media, sharing a video of the fight's finish. Although 34-year-old Aline Pereira, like her brother, has a background in kickboxing, her mixed martial arts record isn't as strong. She currently has one win and two losses. Still, with her brother's guidance, we can hope to see her improve and find success in the future. But bro, like Alex Pereira's a fucking monster. You don't really think that you'd beat him in a boxing match, right? 1,000% I would beat him. Roundtree actually kind of exposed that he doesn't have a high volume output. He doesn't like body shots. And in MMA, Pereira would rip my head off. Yeah. But boxing is a completely different sport and the pace of it and the style of it but you is know he did completely kick, he, different. He did kickboxing too, though. So you don't think yeah, but he, he, he has holes, right? I mean, Roundtree rocked him, hurt him a couple of times to the body, but didn't follow up on it. So if anything, this fight showed me yes alex Pereira is great but i know i would beat him in a boxing match and i still would love to make that happen and pressure's on him you know if he can find his way out of the ufc contract like nate nate diaz did and then eventually him and i can talk looks like Pereira has a new toy to enjoy
Congratulations to Alex Pereira on his new car. We hope he returns soon. Things just aren't as exciting without him. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. We're so close to reaching 80,000 subscribers, and we're incredibly grateful for your support. Well, guys, it's officially 10 weeks today until I get me revenge on Utec. 10 weeks is all I've got to wait. 10 more weeks. I'm coming. The GK Steam Train is coming.